All right, so in our training today, we had a really good question, and it was, what, in my experience, caused the most fights whenever I was working uh, as a doorman, a bouncer, nightclub, floor walker, in any of those environments, and that sort of thing. And what was interesting is that, first of all, we have alcohol, drugs, basic stuff like that, which everybody knows about, right? But then we have jealousy huge jealousy and insecurity are not only the biggest problems that started physical confrontations in those environments but it's also at least from a male perspective it's what causes us the most problems in life so we have to have emotional intelligence and if you've heard that in a very broad sense before uh, that's good but very specifically towards guys as we're growing up. So this is for your students, if you are a martial arts or combatives instructor, if you're a leader in the military, if you are in the military yourself or you're in law enforcement and you feel these things creeping up, they are 100% normal and human. So what we have to do is learn how to deal with our emotions in advance of feeling them so that way we can respond as opposed to reacting when things happen. So let's talk about these emotions. When it comes to relationships, someone that we are interested in romantically, sexually, whatever, all you have to do is turn on the Investigation Discovery Channel and see how that topic right there, love and sex, causes more crap and more acts of spontaneous violence than pretty much anything else. So what we need to do is ask ourselves, what's the worst thing that can happen if I approach this gal? Well, she rejects me. Okay, so I know the answer to that. Uh, what's the worst thing that could happen in my relationship, whether it's marriage, significant other, doesn't matter. Well, they cheat on me, okay? Maybe they leave me for somebody else. All right, so now you have some pretty good answers there. Uh, what's going to happen if, or how am I going to feel if I'm out in public with my significant other and they are spending time with somebody else and it's making me feel insecure or jealous? Now, on the street, most guys will never say, I'm insecure or I'm jealous. What they say is, I feel disrespected because that sounds tougher, right? Still, the shit hurts, right? It hurts, and what it does is it causes us to behave, in a lot of cases, in loud, aggressive, assaultive, or violent ways. And what does that do? Worst case scenario, we hurt someone else. Best case scenario, we get away with it. Middle of the line, nobody else gets hurt, but we screw up our own life. We get put in jail. We we get in a domestic violence situation or something of that nature. So we have to decide in advance that we are already in the warrior class. So our height and stress levels are already going to be operating at a maximum. So we can't let that other shit ruin our professional lives or worse than that, hurt somebody else physically. So we have to say, what am I going to do if I go into a club and I approach a young lady and she doesn't want anything to do with me? All you have to do is smile and say, I'll let you be. Or, you know what, I don't want to bug you too much longer. Consider this a compliment. And you walk away. Okay? Don't fire off like that guy did in the club and just start yelling at, you know, these women saying, what, you think you're too good for me? Do you know who I am? And create a fucking scene. That's ridiculous. First of all, if there is any chance between you and that girl getting together, and you're cool about it, and you just take, you know, take the shot on the chin, she's not interested in you right now, and you walk away, she might come back later and say, you know what, I apologize, what have you, I'm under stress. Or another gal might see you handle that, in a cool, calm, professional manner, then she will be attracted to you. So just walking away with a smile and say, 
apologize. I don't want to take up any more of your time. Have a good night. It shows that you got other stuff going on in life. You're okay with rejection. And that's it. Now, that's how we have to behave. May it still sting a little bit on the inside? Sure. But we know in advance that's going to happen. Okay? So don't get wound up in that whole disrespect thing and feel like you have to defend yourself or feel like you have to call out a girl because she seems uppity. Listen, I've got a daughter. Uh, I've got a sister. Once girls turn the age of 13, every dude in the fucking planet is trying to get in their pants. And I know it sounds terrible, but that's what it is. So imagine being in their position. They are constantly fending off approaches. And when some come in too strong, uh, that's got to be terrifying. So if you get called out, a girl brushes you off, or she says, leave me alone, you fucking creep, just apologize. Say, you got it. Consider this a compliment. And walk away. That shows that you can handle yourself like a man. You can't be rattled with simple words. And you're an emotionally balanced individual. Okay? That is what you want to give off in those circumstances. You don't want to seem in insecure, easily rattled by words, easily offended. You know, like a 14-year-old in, in junior high school or something like that. So, speaking of that, this topic is actually what we need to be teaching young men in junior high, in high school. How do we deal with rejection and jealousy or insecurity? Because we all feel it. Okay? Next, what was the, the other example? What do I do if my significant other cheats on me? That's a huge one, right? Or if they leave me. You have to understand that it's okay to cry, to feel all the anger, emotions that you're going to feel. What you have to decide is that if you're in a relationship with someone in the future and they cheat on you, expect the worst emotions and feelings to hit you right in the gut, but decide in advance you are not going to react physically, violently, aggressively, or defensively when it goes down. Again, you cannot let that person's behavior Ruin the rest of your life by causing you to go out and cause a fight. Shoot somebody. Stab somebody. Go smashing up someone's car. And now, you've, now you get arrested. Even though it's a misdemeanor, now it's on your record. And you have to answer that as a positive on every job interview that you come across or every job application. So we don't let assholes or bad situations determine our future. We expect the hurt. We understand that that's part of life. Being a young man, you have to learn that it's okay to feel the pain, to cry, to feel insecure, to talk to the right people about it, but we do not act out in violence because we are not going to allow ourselves and the rest of our lives to be affected by things like that. Listen, when you're dating somebody, you're going to break up with every girlfriend, boyfriend you have until one day you get married. So that's a lot of relationships, right? So that being the case, just take this as a sign. If somebody cheats on you, it wasn't, it wasn't meant to be. Okay? Don't say the things that you want to say right then. You have to leave the environment. Think, breathe, go cry over there. Go do all the stuff that human beings need to do away from the situation. Don't let them get the most of you in that situation. Plus, who knows what the heck's going on. We see people that have had relationships where there's infidelity, cheating, right? They split up and then they get back together. So those types of things can be overcome as long as we don't cross the boundaries and put our hands on people. That is something you just can't do. What was the other one? If you're in a club and the person that you went there with or that you're interested in is spending more time with somebody else, showing interest in someone else. Don't go in there and try to 
be bully your way in or start some shit with the other person that's interested in your gal. If anything, it shows that they have good taste and you, you guys might have something in common if you're interested in the same girl. What you have to do is just let the girl know, say, hey, I can tell you're busy. I'm going to be over here at the bar if you want to come hang out. And you back off. Again, if she chooses that person or he chooses that person, it's the way it was meant to be. Okay? You have to get in that mindset where you will fight for somebody. You won't fight over them. Again, you will fight for somebody, but you won't fight over them. So that means that you will come to someone's aid. You will defend somebody. But if they're in a shit mood and they're trying to make you jealous, it's all yours. That's the way you have to be. Okay? Again, you're confident. You realize that emotions hit you, and you don't care about it, right? You don't take that personally. Someone calls you out for crying, fuck it, I cry, whatever. Yep. Just, <laughs> just brush it off, okay? And in the bar situation, or in the nightclub, even in school and things like that, you have to remember that immature people play that whole jealousy game from the aspect of, oh, well, so-and-so pissed me off, so I'm going to try to make them jealous. I'm going to go hang out over there. Or I'm going to go start giving that person attention. And hopefully this one over here will come over here and start some stuff. And then this one will get upset. Maybe they'll throw hands or something like that. That's a game that's been played for hundreds and hundreds of years. The human species sucks sometimes. Now that you know that in advance, you don't have to get pulled into that trap. Okay, It's just like when we're working the door. If someone calls you a motherfucker or says you're a bitch or you're a wannabe cop or you're this, you're pussy... Yeah, you're right. But at least I got a minimum wage job. I'm trying to work my way out of it. Just brush it off. It's not personal, so don't make it personal. Doesn't matter who was working the door that night. That same patron or drunk bad guy would be throwing the same shade at whoever's working the door. So it's not about you. So you have to know that in advance and not make it about you. When we're talking about the relationships, you have to understand that I'm going to date 10, 20 people in my lifetime before I get married. People come together. They break up. It's part of the deal. It hurts. I know this in advance. So I'm not going to get violent over it. I'm not going to go destroy property. I'm not going to scream and disrupt my neighbors and everyone in the neighborhood because I can't get my emotions in check. Okay. Now, I know it's easier to say than to do, but all of these things wrap around back to that original question, what causes most fights and disagreements in a bar? Well, again, the short answer is the same thing that causes fights and disagreements with guys in real life. Alcohol and or drugs, insecurity, the inability to control anger or see anger and hurt and sadness as what it is as being human and it's not a weakness. So we have to deal with that. So that was a very long-winded answer for a very short question. So until next time, I'm Coach Brian.